Sunday yet to come, but we are the ones that are going to set the tone. Right. We are the leaders. We are the ICC Emmers. We are the yes, shepherds. Uh, we are the uh, song leaders. Yes, uh, we are those chosen by the Spirit to be here tonight. Amen. And so, setting the tone. Let's look at how Jesus sets the tone because uh, He is Lord. Amen. In verse one. It says, sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. So Jesus was testing the disciples. Isn't that interesting? Like uh, we have some teachers in the house. How do your students feel about tests? They don't love them. No one likes to be tested. Why would Jesus? Why, why would Jesus do it? It just seems kind of mean. Or is there a benefit? to being tested. Um, Teachers, what are what are the benefits? Tell me, what are the benefits? See how much of them out there we're taking. Okay, so it's a good thing to be tested, right? And so Jesus was loving the disciples. He was giving them a test. And so he says, uh, here's 5,000 people. Go ahead and feed them. And, uh, you know, Jill and I, we've been doing uh, some uh, wedding premarital counseling mm -hmm. and you know we, we look at the budget mm -hmm. of what it's going to cost and you know some places are 30 40 50 dollars a plate mm -hmm. now let's say you got a good deal and you got 10 dollars a plate mm -hmm. what would five thousand <laughs> people be fifty thousand <laughs> and so jesus is like i need fifty thousand dollars you feed them <laughs> And so you see here that Philip, uh, he wasn't doing too well right there. <laughs> He's like, it would take so much money just for each of them to have one bite. And so, you know, we're going to be tested this year, yeah. right? We had a tremendous 2021 um, and, uh, and, and now God wants us to grow. And that's why we're here this weekend. And so sometimes we can... Uh, feel that same way. It's too much. You're asking too much. And so um, uh, we've got to make sure that uh, we get our hearts right. And it starts with this group right here. Yeah. And so I'll let Jill share. Okay. Yeah. For the ladies here tonight, I'm going to turn to Galatians chapter 5. Hey, come on. And we will start reading in verse. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so my point here for the ladies is to keep in step with the spirit this weekend. Um, you know, those of you that are here tonight, you really are the ones that set the tone for all the other women in the church. And uh, it's so important that as you go into this weekend, that you're not going in on your own strength. Uh, you know how Satan works. He's going to be working around the clock all weekend long, trying to sabotage an amazing winter workshop for us. Mm -hmm. And as the women in this room who lead the women in our fellowship, it's super important that we're walking in the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God this weekend, and that we're keeping in step with his spirit. Mm -hmm. We need to come in exuding love, joy, oh, wow. peace, 
patience, mm -hmm. kindness, etc. but not what comes from our own strength. Mm -hmm. um, we need to ex exude that that comes from God's Holy Spirit working inside of us. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, to be honest, as dynamic as many of you ladies are in this room, yeah. even on your best day, what you can muster up on your own power, <laughs> it pales into in comparison yeah. to the supernatural gifts yeah. of the Holy Spirit yeah. that God has freely given you yeah. at your baptism. Yeah. Um, so how do we do this practically? Well, we know that the Holy Spirit is synonymous with God's word. Yeah. They're, they're in complete unity. Yeah. Nice. Um, so make sure that you have great quiet times this weekend. Get your heart and your mind totally in alignment with the scriptures and pray. And this will get you prepared to keep in step with the spirit, regardless of any circumstances that are going on in your life. Um, whether it's an argument with your spouse. What? You know it's coming. <laughs> you know it's coming. Or your car breaks down. Or you have a terrible day at work tomorrow, etc. Uh, you'll be able to tap into the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And you'll be clothed in a love and a joy and a peace and a patience and a kindness, etc. And ready to really leaven the church with the fruits of God's Holy Spirit. John chapter 6. Let's see. Uh, well, you know the story. Um, Jesus miraculously feeds 5,000. Yeah. Um, actually, it's probably double that because there's just 5,000 men. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, verse 16, it says, when evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. Remember that city, Capernaum. They're on their way to Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. So what was Jesus doing? Have you ever thought that? Like, here they are rowing. I don't know if you've ever rowed, but rowing for a mile <laughs> is hard. And they, they, they went, what, four three or four miles and the waters uh were rough because the wind was against them so they must have been exhausted and so that that probably took a long time so what was jesus doing back there you want to know all right let's go back to mark <laughs> business was that's where john and james business was and so they had hardened their heart towards the mission and said, Jesus, we're going our way. Wow. Let's go back. <coughs> well, actually, Jill okay. a little bit right here. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So my second point for the ladies tonight is to fan the Holy Spirit into flame. And I just write this scripture down in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, Paul reminds Timothy to fan into flame the gift of God, which was given to him. And in the same way, we need to be reminded to fan the Holy Spirit into flame. It's, it's inside each one of us, but we have the responsibility to fan it into flame. And turn over to 1 Thess Thessalonians. Come on, Joe. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Starting in, we'll start in verse 14. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. Um, that word quench means to put out or extinguish a fire or a flame. And Paul's writing this to the Thessalonian disciples. Why would he write this? Because it's actually possible for us to quench the Holy Spirit that God's mm -hmm. given us, wow. to put out that flame. Um, 
even to the point that the flame goes out completely and we're spiritually dead. Wow. So how do we make sure we don't quench the Holy Spirit within us? Well, in verse 16, he says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. So when the finances are tight, rejoice, pray, give thanks. When you've been mistreated at work, rejoice, pray, give thanks. Kids driving you up the wall, pray, and give thanks. And um, let's turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. Come on, Joe. Ephesians chapter 4. Where would you go? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Chapter four. Um, starting in verse 30. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Um, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Have you ever thought of the fact that your sin grieves the Holy Spirit? And grief is such a terrible kind of pain. It's a terrible pain. And we cause this pain to God's spirit by our sin. And so in verse 31, he simply says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, every form of malice. And sisters, if there's any form of malice in your heart tonight, let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it tonight. Any, any bad attitudes, any mistrust, any unresolved conflicts, any negativity. Get rid of all that stuff tonight um, so that you're not grieving the Holy Spirit within you. And let's start instead fanning it into flame. And so this weekend, let's shine bright in the fellowship. Come on. Really, Come on. let's bring that glory to God. Okay, so Mark chapter six. Come on, Dave. So we see here that. Uh, he tests the disciples, and uh, really, our spirit, our, our keeping in step with the spirit, setting the tone, really has to do with how much we believe in Jesus, uh -huh. right? How much we really believe what he's saying is true. Uh -huh. He's saying, you feed them, and they didn't obey. They just didn't believe it was possible. Uh, and, you know, those things are going to happen to us um, in this room, and it's going to happen to the people that you oversee. Uh, we're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars in missions, Woo! Oh, and so, some people were, are going to go. Uh, you do it. I, I can't do it. It's their level of faith, and so our level of faith has to be uh, up there, uh, yeah. so that we can lead the way. We can set the tone, and so here he tells them um, to feed these people, and um, they fail the test. And so, what does Jesus do? He sends them off in the uh in the boat and he goes up to pray um in verse 46 it says after leaving them he went up on the mountainside to pray <laughs> and so when you're doubting when the people that you're around are doubting a good thing to do is to imitate jesus yes. go spend yep what would be an equivalent of four hours of rowing against the wind uh -huh. up on the mountaintop, really getting your strength to be able to pull off a miracle like walking on the water. Uh -huh. You know, there's nothing like pulling off a miracle to encourage the brothers and sisters around you. Uh -huh. uh, look at all the people that were baptized last year. Uh -huh. And the faith of the disciples have grown tremendously. Uh -huh. But God continues to send a test. I mean, we've been given special missions for 28 years. Mm -hmm. And every year it's like, ah, you feel a pull. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, we can't do this. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, I'll do it for you. But you got to get your faith there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Come on. Um, and so his faithful actions encourage and restored them. 
And you see here in verse 39, it says, Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the grass. So they sat down in groups of 150s. And so Jesus is organized. Yeah. He understands that we've got to have a plan. We've got to figure out how to meet our needs, how to figure out how to um, be organized ourselves, and then teach other people to be organized yeah. to meet their needs and so on into the lost. Uh, go back to John chapter 6. Right? Yeah. So why did he test them? So that they could grow, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So they could evaluate where they were and what they need to grow in. That's what I wrote here. What are the benefits of being tested? So in John chapter 6, he sends them off uh, to Bethsaida. They go to Capernaum. He walks on water after praying. They get back together. They're fully restored. And so now he's sentimental with them. No, he's not. <laughs> Instead, he teaches them uh, that he is... Uh, the bread of life and that you've got to eat his flesh and you know when you eat something it becomes you whatever you ate today that becomes you if you ate something bad it's not going to be good for you if you ate something good you become that and that's what jesus is saying you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood what does it mean you got to be like me in order for you to be right with god and uh in verse 60 of chapter 6 Again, uh, we're in chapter six. It says, on hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Uh, aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? So I'm going to ask you, what makes people grumble? Go ahead, chat it out. Discomfort. Discomfort. Ooh, that's a good one. Come on, Sean. What, what makes people uncomfortable? Oh, expectations. No, work. Hard. Work. Oh. <laughs> being, you know, being, being challenged. Self -denial. Self -denial. Talking about finances. Talking uh, about finances. Uh, yes. Uh, talking about your marriage. Talking about finances. Talking about raising your children. All those on both sides. It's it's uncomfortable <laughs> for both, on both sides there. The person having to give the message and the one receiving it. These things are all uncomfortable. Yeah. Going to someone and going. This is Jesus. This is you. You need to change these things. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what was happening right here. So they started to grumble. Yeah. And so he doesn't, he doesn't loosen up the expectations. He raises the expectations. Yeah. You've got to be like me. The faith to feed 5,000 people, you've got to have that too. Nice. And they're like uh, grumbling. Mm -hmm. And so... Do you think that's gone away? I mean, this was 22,000 years ago. Do people nope. still grumble? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you think Jesus knew that there was going to be grumbling? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He knows everything. And so we have to understand that, too, that grumbling is going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, actually, I wrote, I wrote here the answer. What makes people grumble? Uncomfortability. Yeah. That, that's what makes people grumble. Nice. You know, Luke uh, told me one time, if people aren't calling me and complaining about you, you're not doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, I'm not calling people to be like Jesus. When you call people to be like Jesus, people are going to grumble and they're going to complain. Yes, and so this is, this is what happens. So uh, the spirit that sets the tone. I believe is the spirit of radicalization. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need this weekend. Let's go. We've got to get radical. We've got to test people's hearts. We got to help them see where they're at, help them evaluate their walk with the Lord. Um, so let's start with these four things. Quiet times. Nice. Yes, sir. Not just quiet times. Uh, I was uh, actually talking to Amari today. He's like, man, I used to read 10 chapters a day. And now I'm down to three or four chapters a day. And so I took him to one verse in uh, John chapter three, verse 30. It says, I must become less. He must become greater. Yep. I said, just focus on that one little verse for a month <laughs> and you will grow. It's not a matter of how much you read, but what is 
uh, going to transform you? What are you reading that's going to transform you? And you got to have some mountaintop prayers. Right. Number two, meetings of the body. Meetings of the body. Um, now, I'm going to probably embarrass some of you right now, oh, but on, uh, I'm going to make it uncomfortable. <laughs> you need to come with a Bible. Yes, sir. And you need to make sure that you're taking notes yes. yeah. it is a fact that today if you're not taking notes and reading along you will uh remember one percent yeah. if you actually read along you'll remember three yeah. percent if you're taking notes you'll remember 30 percent if you turn around and take those notes and teach it to someone else you'll remember 85 wow. percent yes, how can you teach it to someone else if you're not taking notes You've got to come to every meeting of the body with a physical Bible, not the thing you play games on, an actual physical Bible, and take notes. As a matter of fact, Jesus says that uh, in verse 63, Jesus says, The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit. How are you going to live? Uh, according to the spirit this year, if you're not in the word, if you're not taking notes. Nice. In verse 66, it says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Wow. You do not want to leave two, do you? Jesus asked the 12. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and you have the words of eternal life right here in the Bible. Come on. Number three. There should be an expectation that 100% of the disciples in your sector, in your Bible talk, are in studies. Mm -hmm. They need to be in studies. Uh, I, I was talking to Amari. I said, you know, you've been studying with a lot of teens, but the teens are not leading the studies. Ooh. He said, you've got to get the teens leading the studies. They can do Seeking God. Mm -hmm. They can do the Word. Mm -hmm. Get them leading the studies. they oh, got to be in studies. They should be out sharing their faith, getting contacts, following up. Don't tell me you went out and shared your faith and you got zero contacts. That's not sharing your faith. Come on, you got to get contacts so you can follow up. And no Lone Ranger disciples. Mm -hmm. I met someone, I got the contact, and I'm going to personally do a study all by myself no. uh, at, at the cafe. No, no Lone Ranger mm -hmm. uh, studies. Amen? Amen? Number four, contribution. Yes. There should be an expectation of giving generously. That's what the Bible says in uh, in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, and Jesus talks about giving a tithe. But everything in the Old Testament, Jesus Jesus makes it more radical. Yeah. He says no adultery in the Old Testament, and the New Testament he says if you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. Right. Every law in the Old Testament, Jesus takes it to a totally different level. Sure. Where do you think he takes tithes to? To generosity. You if you have ten thing. apples. And you go here, you can have one. Is that is that generous? No, no. Is that generous. And so we gotta we gotta get a heart of generosity. Missions. You gotta get behind missions. Personally, I'm gonna hit missions. That's gotta be your heart. I'm gonna yes, hit sir. missions. And I'm gonna help my Bible talk hit missions. Yeah. It can't be an individual lone no. ranger yep. mission. You've got to get your group together and go, how can I help you? I've got this, how can I help you? And help everyone in your um, group have that same mindset. Mm -hmm. Expect grumbling. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Someone calls me and complains about you, I'll be fired up. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're preaching the word, yeah. you're helping them. You're making them uncomfortable mm -hmm. and that's what's going to set the tone amen, amen. 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 thanks david joe hey bro i i gotta i gotta confess uh you had me grumbling today <laughs> i want to thank you for uh making me uh, helping me be more like jesus so. um this uh, my name is Kevin Burns. This is my beautiful wife Terry. Oh and uh, we are we are we have been given the the task of, of uh, talking about every uh, Bible talk leader needing to be trained. And 
I'm going to share a little personal. I'm going to start off with a little personal experience. Come on. Um, okay. I've been a disciple since 97. Hey, oh, uh, I was baptized in Dallas Fort Worth under oh the I ICOC oh. uh, movement. And um, about a month after I was baptized, I started questioning things and left for a couple weeks, but came to my senses and came back. And about two months after that, they said, come up to me and said, hey, Kev, we think you should be a Bible talk leader. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. Church of 3,000 people, you know, and here I am, this first year teacher in elementary school. You know, hey, three months as a disciple. You're a Bible talk leader. <laughs> okay. Great. I didn't know you better. All right. Off we go. <laughs> and they paired me up with with uh, with the sister that invited me out, which was my music teacher at my school. Right? So off we went, right? And uh, I had no idea what I was doing. Nobody told me what to do. Nobody told me how to do it. <laughs> you know? I relied on uh, my 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 friend who's my assistant Bible talk. I relied. Her name was Bobby Butler. I relied on her because she was in the faith for three more years. Than I was, you know? And so she would kind of say, "We should do this. We should do that." I'm like, "Okay, we'll do that." <laughs> right. So I had I had no teaching whatsoever. I learned as I went, and I had some really really uncomfortable Bible talks. <laughs> I have this awesome, you know, awesome uh, Bible talk going. We're going great. We're all gathered in the park around the tree. And I had this one visitor saying, what about this? I wonder about that. I can't remember exactly what he challenged me on something that I had shared. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was totally caught off guard. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. I turned to Bobby. <laughs> she, she's like, <laughs> so, so one of the other, one of the other guys that, uh, that uh, I had baptized early on said, you know what, why don't we get to that later? I'm like, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, but I had no clue, you know, but as you know, we get, we, we're all you know, Bible talk leaders now are trained, you know, this happens, do this, you know, make sure you come with this, that and the other, and what mm -hmm. you're gonna talk about tonight. On, so um, I'm gonna share with you six, I don't know what you call them, not really points, but practical. And then uh, uh, after the fifth one, I'm going to turn over to Terry and let her share her heart on what mm -hmm. what she, uh, what's on her heart about those five. Okay. Okay. And then I'll close this off with number six. All right. All right. So if you want to write them down, yes. I, call yes, these, sir. I call these the six F's. Six All right, being teachers, nobody wants an F, but you want these F. <laughs> so <laughs> you need these six Fs. A Bible talk leader needs to have a sense of family. Mm -hmm. Bible talk leader needs to recognize the need, of course, for fruit. Great Bible talk leader needs to embrace fellowship. Come on. A Bible talk leader needs to be someone that other people want to follow. Come on, bro. Reach it, man. Come on, now. And on that same note, a great Bible talk leader needs to follow up. Mm. Oh, nice. And the last one, that's most dear and, and hits home to me the most is a Bible talk leader needs to know how to forgive. Mm -hmm. okay. So, family. If we all turn to First Thessalonians 2. Come on, brother. All right. Yeah, starting in verse 7. All right. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you. 
but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order to not be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You, uh, you are a witness, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. So God wants us to be a family. Yes. Right? And a part of being a family, a Bible talk leader needs to make sure that he or she enter each other's homes. Yes. Have time together with everyone yes. in your Bible talk, each of their homes. Mm -hmm. Get to know them on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Get to know their dreams, their aspirations. Papa Swan mm -hmm. has challenged us all to turn to our Bible talks and find out each member's dream nice. in our Bible talk. And that we need to embrace. Because mm -hmm. that in itself creates a very close sense of family. Yeah. Practical number two, or point number two, fruitful. Yeah. First Corinthians. Well, look up. Come on, brother. First Corinthians chapter 12. Hmm. Starting in verse 15. Come on. Okay. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, uh -huh. it would not be for that see that reason to cease to be a part of the body and if an ear should say because i am not an eye i do not belong to the body it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body if the whole body were an eye where would the sense of hearing be if the whole body were an ear where would the sense of smell be but in fact god has arranged the parts of the body every one of them just as he wanted them to be so if they were all one part where would the body be? Mm. Why, why am I using this scripture? Yeah, tell it. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> we don't want to reach out. I mean, we do want to reach out to everyone. We do want, we do want to share the gospel with everyone. We do want everyone to come in contact with, to know the truth, and become a disciple. Amen. But, by nature, we reach out to people who are a lot like us, yeah. right? We reach out to people we're not intimidated by. Mm -hmm. We reach out to people we feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. right? But wouldn't that be reaching out to a bunch of eyes? Mm -hmm. wow. Let's go! Let's go. Come on, bro. You better preach! <laughs> <laughs> so we need to make sure that when we reach out to people we reach out to the eyes the hands the feet, on, bro. people that challenge us people that because we god wants everyone to be a part of this family yeah. Yeah. fellowship Amen. ephesians four come on, man. Come on, bro. Starting in verse 11, Ephesians 4, starting in verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors mm -hmm. and teachers. To prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of grace may be built up. That right there is the need for fellowship, oh, to God. build each other up. We all have talents. We all have special, you know, we're eyes, feet. We all have differences, and we all need to use those to help build each other up. Mm -hmm. um, a Bible talk 
leader needs to believe in each member of his or her Bible talk yep. and have a role for them, have a vision for them. I see you being a region leader someday. I see you being a Bible talk leader someday. I see you being a kingdom kids teacher someday. You know, you know, I see you taking over this Bible talk someday. Uh, you know, I can't tell you, you know, David, I, I blame him a lot, you know, for, <laughs> for taking my right hand guys, you know, in my Bible talk, you know, I mean, I, I get so close and, and we get so tight, you know, Howard McLaughlin, we're awesome. We're rocking. Hey, Howard, you're gonna lead a Bible talk now. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Hey, Herman. All right. You know, great buddy, good friend. We're fighting the battle together. This Come is on. great. You know, David. Hey, Herman. You're gonna go lead with Nicole. <laughs> and we're gonna have it. A... Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the role yeah. of you know of the Bible talk leader. And that's the need of that Bible, the fellowship in the Bible talk. Okay. Um, a Bible talk leader needs to be someone to follow. All right. Isaiah, we're going old school on this one. All right. Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32, starting in, in verse 8. And only verse 8. I think verse 8 really says it all. But I'm going to follow it up with another one that I think really says it all. Isaiah 32, verse 8, it says, But the noble man makes noble plans, uh -huh. and by noble deeds he stands. Flip over to First Peter 5. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, thank you. Honey. <laughs> See, I had I had back in the day when I started sharing <laughs> up in front, I was always that guy who would get, get a little anxious and not be able to get to the scriptures. <laughs> and so one of the brothers back said, You need to mark them with the with the paper. Right? So, so I've always done that. Well, guess what I forgot to do? <laughs> I forgot to mark first Peter. <laughs> but that's all right. I can do it. So, uh, <laughs> first Peter, see, that's that's why she stands so close. Yeah, all right, first Peter 5. This is this to me is something that. A Bible talk leader, I'm working on this. To put this to memory. I just, okay, I just, this just pierced my heart today as I was, I just added this today. So, First Peter 5, 2 to 3. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not greedy for, the, for money but eager to serve, Amen. not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Mm -hmm. Humility. Bible talk leader needs to be humble. Bible talk leader needs to be giving. A humble giving person is someone people want to follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. One more. <laughs> All right. Follow up. Follow up. Follow up. Bible talk leader not only needs to be someone to follow, but a person that knows how to follow up. So we are in Mark 6. Mark 6, 30. The apostles gather around. The apostles uh, gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Right here we see, very simply, right here we see the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done 
and talk. Mm -hmm. Bible talk leader needs to do the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bible talk leader needs to encourage not only members of Bible talk to report everything that's going on, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's not always the case. We're all, everybody's busy. It's usually the Bible talk leader does a reverse role here, goes after everyone and make sure everyone's all right, make sure they had study went well, make sure people are getting taken care of. Okay. Bible talk leader needs to know how to do those things and have that heart, as First Peter spoke about, to go after. Yeah. And with that, come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. Woo! Oh. All right. Isn't he awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's really tall, too. <laughs> um, all right. So most of you don't know, my testimony comes from a Bible talk done right. Uh, the December 1994, uh, I was invited to a Bible talk. Come on. Uh, I had moved up here to Syracuse from Rochester in May of 94. Um, and uh, when long distance was a thing, where you're like, oh, no, long distance costs money, people wouldn't call you because it's long, long distance. So my friends were like, it's long distance, I can't call you. So I would come home every day with a zero on my answering machine until December of 94. I came home from work on that Monday after Sunday of being invited to a Bible talk with a one on my answer machine. It was Marlene Hess and said, I want to invite you over for dinner and to a Bible talk. And um, I was praying for months while I was, for months, I would lay in my bed every Sunday and listen to those bells ring across the street at the Catholic church that I went to once and didn't get spoken to at all. And so I just was like, God, I don't want that. I want something else. I want the Bible. I want people to talk to me. I want some friends. I want something else. So I had been praying and God answered my prayer. And in January of 95, I was baptized Come on. Tuesday and celebrated 27 years. Oh. And it was a result of a good Bible talk. Nice. So I went to this Bible talk uh, and I heard prior to that, that everybody was praying for singles. And in January, 15 singles, I think, yeah. got baptized. Yeah. Wow. So, um, they were, they were being fruitful, wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. So they were fruitful. Uh, I went to dinner, right? The first time somebody invited me over to dinner. So I was invited into their home, which I, I loved. Um, it was an amazing, I can just visualize the circle. It was a big circle, right? It was just, everybody shared, it was vulnerable. And I was in awe, I was like, this is what I want. <laughs> and um, it actually happened to be on a Tuesday night, and I was auditioning for this um, singing group in Syracuse called the Spirit of Syracuse. Ooh. It's a women's singing group, Ooh. and but they met on Tuesday nights. Oh. And when I found out Bible talks were like on Tuesday nights, I stopped auditioning. Oh. <laughs> and so, because that, that that's not what I want. I it was it was something I was doing to maybe meet people, yeah. but that's not what I was looking for. Come on, come on. Um, and um, so one of the F's that I think Kevin forgot. Oh, <laughs> great, honey. How'd I forget? Oh, fun. Yeah. 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 Right? Hook, line, and sinker. Anybody that knows me will understand. Two of the brothers, after the Bible talk, said, hey, we're going bowling. Oh. I was like, um, um, you're going bowling? They're like, yeah. And, they're, and I said, can I come with you? I'm like, sure. I said, well, do I have time to go home and get my ball first? Oh. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah, you have your own ball? 
I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, well, we yeah, had a different plan. Yes, you did. So uh, we went bowling, and I beat them both, and they were like, oh, fierce, right? All right. So I didn't start leading the Bible talk right away because what I was asked to do, because I was a nanny, is kids can go. But when I did get a Bible talk, my first Bible talk consisted of 70 and 80 year old women. Oh. <laughs> and let me tell you, as my friend Sharon reminded me today in a beautiful card that she wrote me, we had the most fun <laughs> with this Bible talk because we would ha have church, we would go to one of their houses and let me tell you, if I could have filmed it, we'd be rich today because oh. they were hysterical. <laughs> they, now, mind you, these were the mothers of some of our disciples. They were the mothers and grandmothers. And we had a kicking, fruitful Bible talk. Oh. And it was only because I had a great example, one that was, um, you know, truly what i was looking for Amen. truly a product of that bible talk mm -hmm. and um you know god has really uh helped us to grow in our uh, our leadership of bible talks we've Amen. had bible talks that have been fruitful we've Amen. had bible talks that haven't shown up <laughs> and canceled bible talks when we didn't know it was canceled oh, wow. uh you know so and that's where our last point comes in. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. My, my wife's living testimony on yeah. how important the Bible talk is. Yeah. Yeah. So I saved the last one. Uh, and thank you, honey, for number seven. <laughs> we'll make this number seven. And fun is number six. Okay? Oh, yeah. Then you gotta have one. I don't know. I, don't I wasn't know. there to help. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so being able to forgive. I'm not gonna read the the scripture, but I have referenced Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Okay. And um, you know, it's about the Jesus telling a parable of the the master forgiving a large debt of one of his servants and then the servant turning around and not forgiving a small debt of mm -hmm. someone else you know um and just showing god's heart and his willingness to forgive forgive us and we in turn need to forgive others yeah. Yeah. and that's a hard lesson for me uh to take mm -hmm. um i'm better at it now mm -hmm. you know but back back when i was like i was sharing earlier First, you know, Bible does a Bible talk. I was hurt bad, real bad in the ICLC, really bad. And it took me a long time to trust. I still have trust issues today. But as a Bible talk leader, you got to be able to forgive and forget mm. and move on. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I was talking with David today about it, and he, he, uh, <sighs> Terry and I have been facing a big challenge these past five days, right? And and it's not what you think. <laughs> We've had plumbing issues at the house. Okay, bad. Uh, yeah, really bad. To where you know you got stuff in your in your basement you don't want floating in your basement. <laughs> okay, so but you know it it, it reminded me of. David, I'm gonna see. Remind me of, of you know how how sin is, right? Mm -hmm. And and about you know how to overcome it and how to. Sometimes you have that clog in the drain where you can just get the snake and ram it in there a few times, and boom, it's all over. Mm -hmm. Forgive and forget, right? You deal with it head on. <laughs> You're all good. The nastiness is gone. Hey, let's go, right? But then there's times like ours where you snake. You snake again, you snake again, you get at it, 
and nothing's resolved. You get angry. You're throwing your hands up. You're like, why don't you repent? Well, why don't you repent? You know, <laughs> you get to those points where it gets ugly. Come on, girl. really ugly. And then you got to call in the professional. <laughs> right? You got to call in Mr. Reuter and get at the issue. You, know? you, gotta, you gotta call in your disciple. You gotta call it, you know, you gotta call in for some help, right? And, and sometimes you gotta pay a hefty price. Uh, $6,000. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you gotta do this, right? <laughs> you know, but you know that's that's the heart we need, though. As uh, as a, as a Bible talk leader, you got to be able to have that heart to go at it, deal with it head on, Amen. take whatever comes your way, wow. and love the person unconditionally, yeah. and Come reach on. that level of forgiveness Come where on. you can go out and do all those other six things <laughs> to the seventh, and to that may God have all the glory. <laughs> No. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't know there was gonna be a little history shared, so uh, I think I have to share some as well. Um, and that'll lead into my introduction. But uh, I moved to Syracuse in 1993. I was baptized in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in 1990. And I was uh, a Christian for you know three years and, and a young single guy, and they said do you want to go to Syracuse, New York? And I said, sure. I didn't. And I got a map out and, you know, to figure out where it was. <laughs> knew nothing about it. But, um, you know, it, it was an amazing journey. And our first baptism, the night before the inaugural service, was this young flight attendant. Oh. And, and, you know, I happened to, she happened to catch my eye. Oh. Yeah, that would be my young life with oh. no, It's amazing how God works. Because that one of the costs I had to count moving from Milwaukee was it's a small planting. There is 20 some of us. And there were very few single women. And I'm a 26 year old guy. And I, you know, certainly marriage was one of my dreams. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to put it in God's hands. Come on, man. He worked it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a little history there, but greetings from the newly formed Q sector. Yeah, that's what we're calling ourselves. Um, and we're, we're, we're really quiet. And we're excited. Thank you, New Jersey. That you yeah. bring in a lot of life to this room yeah. for coming up. Um, but we wanna, you know, we wanna inspire everyone. Imagine this. Imagine if every disciple this year was free. Yes. And not only imagine it, that's our goal. Yeah. You know, and, and um, you know, Teach and I over the years, we've had so many great stories and people added and friends added. And, you know, it's um, what an awesome goal. And that is one of our church goals this year. Amen. So let's start in John 3. Oh, and we're going to look at uh, a little Jesus in verse 22. And Tisha and I have got together at lunch today to try and sync our messages. And I, don't, I don't know if they're fully synced, but we're going to find out. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, John 3 and verse after this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now, John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. And, you know, a couple of things happened here with Jesus. He hung out with his boys. Mm -hmm. And they baptized. Right. You know, that's a pretty simple formula right there. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, I, it said they were hanging out. They were mm -hmm. together. And I wondered what they talked about. You know, it was Pete and Andy. You know, and, um, you know, what did they talk about? Hey, what was the water like today? 
you know, if, if you're a fisherman, it's all about the weather, the wind, the waves, the water temperature, you know, the how deep did you set the nets? How strong was the wind? Was that a north or the south? I don't think they were talking about that because we know that they left their nets behind. Yeah. They left their nets behind immediately, I think is what I, I recall. Yeah. So, you know, it, and I really believe this is where it starts. It starts with our conversations, you know. And what do we, what do we, what do we talk about? The people we're meeting, the people that are studying, you know, our plans for the weekend. And do, are they evangelistic? Do we have a plan to meet more people? Um, last night was our youngest son's birthday, Sam. Come on, Sam. 22. 22 and, and I took him and Levi to this new restaurant pub called Myers Creek. It was really cool. And um, we were just talking, you know, and there was a guy named Todd sitting next to us. Yeah, I could just tell he wanted to engage us. You know, he was, he was alone, but we were, we were just having fun. And uh, it was interesting. Todd was a, his mother was Scottish. His father was Italian and he was Korean. Oh. I was like, wait a minute. No, he was, he was adopted. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like, we had the greatest conversation. And as we were talking, you know, I shared about, I was from, he goes, well, why, what brought you to Syracuse? The door was oh, open. Yeah. You know, and it was, it, it's, you know, what a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I began to share about moving for the church and everything, you know, years ago. And Levi's a disciple. And Levi was telling him about the singles. And my son Sam, yeah, my son Sam was a little uncomfortable. You know, was like, come on, Dad. Yeah. But it, you know, I think that's what Jesus, when he's hanging out with his guys, you know, they were they were planning their next day. Well, who are we gonna meet? Where are we gonna go? You know, what city? What it, it was just, you know, it, it grows once you start building on that. Um and then across the river, what was John doing? Baptizing. Yeah. And it, it didn't say he was hanging out. He was just baptizing because there was plenty of water, it says, which is interesting because we have plenty of water in Syria. I think Tyrese and TJ know that very well. They went swimming January 1st. I stole water. Plenty. Um, yeah, and this, you know, that's, that's how it starts. It's like, gosh, how how fun is it? You know, Tisha, well, I'm sure she's going to share all about, but she walks our dog every day. And we have a 100-pound dog. It's not a, a you know, and it, it catches your eye. It, every time, it's over 100 pounds. Every time I take the dog out, people stop and talk. And me and Sam were driving down the street two nights ago, and we saw this big dog in the road, and he goes, look at that, cool. Was Tisha walking? <laughs> but that you know, life. How do you start to come? You know, is your mindset? Man, I gotta go meet people and talk yes. about this. Yeah. So with that, I give you the teacher. And so, um, you know, when I read this, I, I was just, I was amazed at to just think about it. People were walking to you to get baptized. Yeah, they were coming to him. Like, wow. I mean, how, you know, and it made me think about today, there's so many misconceptions about being saved. So we don't have people walking up to us saying, can I get baptized? Because there's so many misconceptions out there. So, come on, sisters, we have to <coughs> convince the people that we meet of the truth. Yes. I mean, that's that's what it is, so that we can baptize them. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so it made me really think about that. And um several months ago I had to reestablish my convictions and how important baptizing people was Come on. and being fruitful. Um you know it it became something that was kind of my checklist mm -hmm. of things I had to do, read my Bible, share my faith, whether it was once a day or once a week or once a month, you know, um, and I had to reestablish those convictions and it came from gaining faith from the word yep. and um, those around me. And like Dave said, you know, I have made it my goal every day. I get up, 
I read my Bible and then I get my coat, my hat, my scarf and my headband and put my earbuds in and I listen to um, the Bible and I share my faith with people. I have a pocket full of invites and that's how I start my day, wow. you know, okay. so wow. it's really worked out great. Yeah. Cause when Sam and Dave went by me, they didn't know it was me, but I would stop talking to a neighbor that was two yeah. blocks down. Yeah. So, you know, that's, it's really helped me. And I, and I really learned that, and I taught myself and shame on me for it to have gotten to a lukewarmness, but mm -hmm. after we are baptized, saving other people is the most important priority yeah. we have as a yeah. disciple. Yeah. And um, thank God that that is, is, my heart has been renewed to have that now. Um, so, and, and I read um, the other day in Matthew 21, 43, it says God's kingdom will be taken back from us and handed over to people who will. Yep. the kingdom Come on, and that was like really sobering to me yeah. matthew 21 43 um it will be take the kingdom can be taken from us yeah. if we don't um make it a priority mm -hmm. to um share the gospel and baptize others yeah. um if we aren't focusing on saving others um I know what I'm focused on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Myself. Yep. So it's so important that our Bible talks, um, you know, we need to be actively helping others to become disciples. Or that if we don't, we become self-focused and our Bible talk is we wondering why it's just kind of spinning around mm -hmm. and no one's doing anything. And it's because we're more self-focused and then we become a burden mm -hmm. instead of a helper. Wow. So. Come on. Okay, where did I leave off? So John, you know, as he said, people are coming to him. You know, there's a big buzz. It's like, wow, who is this guy? Well, what attracted people to him? Let's take a look in verse 29. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. That makes sense, right? The friend who attends to the bridegroom waits and listens for him. And is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. Who's who's the bridegroom? Yeah. What's the voice? God's word for us. Come on. Nice. Any? Uh, let's go on. That joy is mine and is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. Wow. And it's cool how the Spirit works. I think Dave shared that scripture earlier. Yeah. And there's another one we have that Kevin and Terry stole. It. <laughs> yeah. Spirit. 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 And you know, this jo thing, joy, isn't it fun to be around people that are joyful? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and what's what's the, the opposite of that? What Dave was sharing is grumble. You know, we um did a, a very kind thing, and I wonder if we thought all about what would happen. We moved my wife's parents into our house this week. <laughs> and um you know, no, it's, it, we counted the cost, you know, I mean, but it's amazing how older people can be kind of grumpy. <laughs> and, and, you know, poor Tisha, because her mom, every time, you know, we're still kind of getting settled. Tisha's part of her life is upstairs, the makeup and that, and our bedroom's down, and their parents are in the middle. So Tisha will, like, have be getting ready for work and have to run upstairs to do her makeup and her mom go, hey, Tisha, come here, I want to talk to you, you know. <laughs> it actually is like one minute. But it, it's, it's, it's daily. But what we've learned, we just overcome it with joy, you know. Because oh, yeah. Tisha's dad can be a kind of, it's funny with the old guys. It's all about the heat. You know, <laughs> you know her dad, Nick, is having a great day when the heat is set at 72 and the thermostat reads 72, you know. When it's set at 72 and it's 70 degrees, we got problems. <laughs> and I hear about it, you know, but, um, but John's joy, it came from Jesus. It yeah. came from him becoming less and God becoming more. Yeah. You know, and that, that's a simple formula. And, um, you know, I love being around people like this, you know. Yeah. 
because the takers will set the life out of you. But the joyful disciples, it it encourages you. It it gives you, you know, more power. And, um, Mm -hmm. but I, you know, I I think that's what we need to be. You know, God talks about the fragrance. Just, it's attractive. You know, our people coming to us, we can create that. You know, we had our Bible talk last week at the Salt City Market, cool, new, yeah, open court food, cool. but, you know, we had a blast, but people were looking, what, what mm-hmm. are you guys doing, you know, yeah. what's, what's up with you, <coughs> you know, it's attractive, yeah. Yeah. Okay. because it's missing, yeah. um, moving on, let's look at uh, John 4, sorry, did you have, no. okay, we're good, we're good, we're sinking, all right, John 4, verse 1, now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. And it's interesting to me, the Pharisees had heard what Jesus was doing. They were curious. You know, they, they were watching him. They... I don't even think they had been there. They heard, you know, through the their people that they sent out. Um, but it wasn't Jesus who was baptizing. It was his disciples. Yeah. And this is a leadership group, amen? Yeah. And that is, um, you know, that's the call, is, is for us to help everyone down to the, you know, latest baptized Christian type to do this to baptize um you know we've been part of the church for a long time and at one point it was like bob and mary remember Mm -hmm. a bunch of you know bunch of people but only a few doing the work Mm -hmm. um and it's really that's the victory is when you everyone is doing um what we want them what we need them to do um you know, I, Gary's not here tonight. Gary Frank, all of us, <laughs> all of you guys know, but you know, Gary has um, some speech impediment and some social awkward. You know, but we were talking about Gary and Dave, and I was talking to Tisha and Jill, and it's like I have a vision for Gary. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't think I have in the past, but why not? You know, mm-hmm. Dave was sharing about a disciple who is similar, but he was always bringing people. You know, he he wasn't the guy that would. Baptizing, but he just always had people with him. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's as a leader, it's, it's up to us to have faith in every yeah. one yeah. of our people. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, yeah. And, and you can feel that when someone has faith in you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it changes you when you start to do things you didn't think you could do. Yeah. Um, Let's go. Amen. Okay. So, um, yeah, we all have to baptize come on disciples have to baptize all of us Mm -hmm. and um i was thinking about um you know how i in the past have well let campus the campus girls bring them in you know i'll I'll just study it with them you know let let the leaders do it the leaders will bring all those people they got so much time they can be up on campus they can be here let's let them do it now to study with them uh no Mm -mm. Uh, we have to make sure that all of us are sharing our faith bringing people to church setting up the studies uh, meeting them for coffee having them for dinner um you know it's it's up to all of us and um i thought you know how do we inspire people others in our bible talks to be in a um you know to to be bringing people out and to be studying the Bible. And it's, it starts with us yep. mm-hmm. sisters. We got to get the, the people out. Yeah. If you bring somebody week one, they start studying the Bible. You bring somebody to Bible talk. They start studying the Bible. You can't, you can't tell me that those women around you that are sitting there are going to be like, it's going to build their faith. Yeah. You know, it builds their faith so much yeah. to be like, holy cow, she's bringing in these people. 
you know, someone said, like, I've already reached out to everybody in the city. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, it's like, what? (laughs) 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 What? There's so many, you know, God's word is still his word. And he says, you know, it's plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. So we need to get out there uh, and inspire. We just by um you know our example we can and expecting um, our women to follow in our example as we follow jesus is a way to do it um you know and i think each week um we need to keep asking you know who have you met who are you bringing you know encourage them to always be um you know to always have it on the front of their mind to be um thinking about who they're going to bring you know um share always who, you know, I always try to share who I've met, yep. who I'm meeting, who I'm studying mm-hmm. with. Yeah. Um, nothing builds faith more than that. When you are um, sharing your faith together, when you're studying the Bible with women together, um, that builds so much faith and it builds so much um, unity mm-hmm. within your Bible talk. Um, and, you know, in making sure that we're bringing all of our women into the studies, don't let any woman not be in a study yeah, from yeah, week yeah. to week, yeah. you know, um, switch it up. It helps so much for the women who are studying the Bible to meet more and more people as they go. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, Matthew 5. In verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. That's kind of silly. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen.